This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. After a thrilling Sunday of football between all those fun games, especially the late window, a lot of good ones as well. We get to close things up on Monday with a game that doesn't appear all that fun at first glance, but maybe we'll get some more chaos to close out the week. We're going to break down Commanders at Eagles with Ryan Williams getting his read on this game to close out week number 10 on a high note. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com. Joined here once again by Ryan Williams. Check him out on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. Ryan, week number 10, almost fully in the books. How you doing today? Oh, I'm doing just fine, Jim. You know, we're just trying to it's crazy. We're ending week 10, going on to week 11. The weeks start to wind down, and you start to see the light at the end of the tunnel for postseason. Uh, so I'm just enjoying life here. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited because uh, next week, week 11, we get Cowboys and Vikings. And for some reason in my brain, that matchup is always associated with Thanksgiving. I know it's not on Thanksgiving, but like, if we get a Cowboys and Vikings matchup, that means it's November, which means I am very close to putting out Christmas decorations. This means I am very close to being in a good mood for an entire month. So we're almost there. That's we got phenomenal. some really fun football on Sunday, too, that that Vikings-Bills uh, game. Um, I bet the Vikings money Ooh. line because of the Josh Allen news on Monday. And okay. Sunday morning, I was like, well, that was a waste of money. And <laughs> it wound up being uh, very <laughs> stressful, but very fun. Um, your Bears yeah. uh, had Justin Fields play pretty well again, and they lost to improve their draft picks. So I feel like we got to both be in a pretty good mood on this Monday. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think the fact that they're losing these close games, right, is kind of a little bit weir- wearisome. You know, you'd yeah. like to you like to see your team have a chance to close it out at the end. But yes, it's all about the draft picks for Justin Fields. If we can get a top ten pick or better, um, that's really what it's about. Um, and you know, just try and get some get some momentum going into twenty twenty three. And you also negatively impact the Lions draft pick. So, hey, it's a uh, it's a win win uh, for sure. We're going to break down this okay. commanders at Eagles game on Monday night here in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to covering the spread wherever you get your podcast, because we got podcasts every weekday right here in the same feed. We've got uh, this one. We've got our week, week 11 first look coming up. We've got Ed Fang doing some World Cup previews coming up on Tuesday and also uh, Wednesday, a fun guest on the covering the spread. At a college football podcast with Ed as well. There, uh, we'll have our full preview of the ride coming up Thursday, and then our player prop breakdown with the JJ Zachary from Friday. All those right here on the Covering the Spread podcast feed and up on the FanDuel YouTube page as well. Now is the perfect time to download FanDuel America's number one sports book because right now, new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's free bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Try out features like same game parlays, play your way and bet on more than just the final score. Wager on everything from touchdowns to total yards to catches on an app that's safe, secure, super easy to use. So sign up today and for your no sweat first bet. Make every moment more this season with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and in present in select states. First online real money wager only. Refund issued is non-withdrawable free bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700 or in Kansas, ksgamblinghelp.com. In Louisiana, 1-877-770-STOP. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text open y In Tennessee, call the red line at 1-800-889-9789. Let's shift our focus now to this Commanders at Eagles game for Monday night. Before we talk about the traditional markets here, Ryan, what's your overall view of this rematch here between the Commanders and the Eagles? Yeah, so I, I think for me, it comes down to, you know, 
how far can the Eagles take this and how kind of legit they are, right? When we're talking about the brass of the NFC, I mean, they got to, they probably were watching football yesterday, see what the Vikings can do as they're right on their tails there with only one loss. Um, and, you know, this is a divisional game where you like can't let this one slip away. You're 10 and a half point mm-hmm. favorites. I think that number is pretty hefty. I know we'll talk about the markets in general, but like this is a game, divisional game, like Heineke. He's only played one game in this matchup, like in his career, which I was kind of shocked about. But like, you know, they only lost about four points in this game uh, earlier this year when they played in January last season. So we know he's a gamer. Um, Washington has some pieces there. I'm not sure about the status of Chase Young. But, you know, I expect Washington to go out there and, you know, still try and play for something. I mean, they, they've only got three wins on the season. They're definitely in the mix to, you know, be playing for draft picks here. But um, this this is just one of those games for me where, like, you know, we talked about the Eagles, you know, playing the Vikings earlier this year. And, like, we'll see how legit they are. And all these, you know, Dallas coming down, we'll see what they are. But to me, it's about the Eagles now. Can you beat up on these teams that you're supposed to win against handedly? And uh, that's really what I'm looking for tonight. I think beat up was the right word. Can they do that? Can they accelerate and just bury a team? Because they kind of did that the first time they faced the commanders. Um, I was watching that game on plane. I just have like these flashbacks of every time Carson Wentz dropped back, the Eagles defensive line was absolutely just lighting up the Washington offensive line. It was honestly a pretty dominant showing. And I'm curious how that changes the second time around, because, you know, you can kind of better account for a better game plan for a pass rush you expect to be very good. I'm just not sure if the commanders are good enough to nullify that complete. So let's talk here about the traditional markets for this game. Eagles are 10 and a half point favorites total in this game comes in at 43 and a half. When I look at my numbers, I think so. I have the Eagles money line in um, earlier week in an earlier week parlay um, that was uh, tied at the giants. So that one's still alive. That was when it was, I think, minus 460. It is now minus 590. So I've got nothing there. Uh, 10 and a half is a pretty big number. So despite the okay. fact I've got them at 11.62, I can't lay the 10 and a half because of uh, the key number at 10 there. So right now, with where things stand, I feel like I've kind of been priced out of the Eagles, which is unfortunate. But what about you? What are you seeing in this game uh, from a traditional markets perspective? Yeah, I think uh, I was just actually pulling up just to make sure I had the line correct here as we look at the over under in this game. I feel like we could, you know, really see two teams kind of slot get out. We got the over at 43 and a half right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook. I, I would, you know, that that's a tough one. You know, you're really kind of mm-hmm. looking at going past that number there. Um, but on an island game, I'd be willing to say that, you know, these teams, you know, they play it a hundred times. It's, it's probably going to hit the under um, over 50 percent. So. I'm look. I'm looking at that. I mean, we you talked about like the Eagles being healthy, healthier. Um, we'll see what the Washington side of things again is is like on on defense, especially. Um, but they, the Eagles just had their way with this team. Um, so you know maybe some drive stall out. Um, the Eagles defense is is very stout. Um, so they can make you know Heineke's life a little bit miserable. I'm looking at you know traditionally taking the under forty three and a half in a game like this. Um, the, the spread, like I said, it, it's just too, it, it's just too big, um, for me to, to get on that line. I mean, at 11, yeah. um, it, it, it got up to, and now 10 and a half, it's just, it, it just feels weird, you know, and I'm, I'd be willing, yeah. I'd definitely be willing to take the Washington side. If we get any type of status on Chase Young's, um, ability to be playing in tonight's game, because I think that really would help the Washington defense out, um, to help give them some, uh, shorter, shorter drives, get the on the field that's the biggest bummer about these these island games is that the the activation rules are different um so like let's say it's a sunday game you have to activate guys from ir saturday at 4 p.m that's when you have to okay. activate them or bring them up from the practice squad for a monday night game i believe it's like four o'clock which is okay. super yeah. annoying four o'clock day yeah. of like Right. I know that like they don't want to compete with like the games going on on Sunday, but like it means we're not going to know Chase Young until 4 p.m. Eastern today. Um, it sounds like yeah. he's probably not going to go based on what I, I've read, but he actually is a legitimate difference maker. So I understand uh, your hesitation there. The The scheduling, though, is super annoying with these 
uh, games. I was trying to like game plan around like single game DFS slates. It's it's a nightmare trying to figure out who will be called up and stuff like yep. that. Let's talk about this Eagle side of here. As you mentioned, they are pretty healthy right now. Uh, but the problem is we've seen them coast when they've gotten leads. And we've seen that because they've gotten a lot of leads. And they've been able to coast quite a bit this year. But it's been a bit annoying because they're not full foot on the gas at all times, which to me makes it tough to really get enthusiastic about betting props on their side, unless it's an under where I feel like maybe that guy won't be involved early and then they, they coast later on. So hmm. I'm not seeing a whole lot right now. What's the read on the Eagle side of this game? Yeah, I think, I think there's some fun to be had um, when you're looking at the prop market. We can start it off with, uh, with Jalen Hurts there. I was looking at his rushing prop um, for a while, and I was surprised they had it up. It's 42 and a half. Um, I really like that number if we were going to get Chase Young playing because just the yeah. pressure and the way that the Washington defense plays, I thought he'd be, you know, running out there. But it is, you know, playing in the home crowd and they still, you know, have a tendency to do what they do, um, trying to get pressure on the quarterback. Um, so I do like that. Yeah, I'm not really on like the Eagles backfield. They're just, you know, this could end up being a Kenneth Gain Gainwell game. And, you know, everybody would be talking about Miles Sanders type of thing because they're so heavily favored. Um, it's just, it's just one of those things I stay away from. Um, I am interested in the in the pass catchers though um, for the Eagles uh, across the board. I mean, and AJ Brown has you know been lighting it up for this team. He's seventy and a half over receiving yards. I mean, he can hit that on two plays, right? Um, I'm not sure if I'm willing to take the over on that. But when you look yeah. at Devonta Smith being at fifty two and a half, I was actually surprised by that. And it's possibly because the books have seen him, you know, kind of not get it going as of late. But when we looked at this first matchup, I mean, Devontae Smith against man coverage against this team, this guy went for 160, like with ease. Um, it, was, it was it was nothing. Um, so that that line felt a little bit low for me, knowing how they play. And then Dallas Goddard, especially um, at his line where he comes in at 45 and a half. This guy's traditionally. Um, at least with Jalen Hurts being the quarterback, has you know gone bananas against this team um, and the coverage that they play. So, and he's been leaned on the past couple of weeks as well. So I love that. And then with Quez Watkins, I was looking to see if we had a, a longest reception for him. It's not listed on the market there, but his receiving prop is eleven and a half. And like, I'm willing to kind of take that bet because you know, especially when things kind of get dicey, like especially like the way I'm seeing this game go under, if the Eagles are looking for big plays, this guy is on the field. I, I'm not yeah. really sure. I don't want to misspeak. I don't know what his ADOT is, but just from the eye test with the Eagles being on so many primetime games and things like that this year so far, um, he's been involved in, in when they want to take a deep target. So 11 and a half, like this is just a low number for him when he's going out there and can catch a bomb over 20 plus yards um, in general. Yeah, his A dot 10.4 yards. So he's getting a lot of okay. downfield works. Last year was tw uh last year was 12. Uh so in general, that is kind of his role is you're gonna go downfield effectively. I did want to ask you about the the Dallas Goddard and Devontae Smith ones. Any yeah. interest for you in alternate markets there? The because Goddard's actually had a lot of receiving yardage upside this year, which is surprising for a tight yeah. end. He's plus 114 to get 50 plus yards. Yeah. I, I like that. I think that's like, if I had to pick between the pass catchers, I would go Goddard's direction. I know that. The question is, would I go towards the alternate market or, or go, to, go towards the strict over-under? Would Goddard be your favorite one there? Do you like Smith more? Which one, if you had to pick one, would be your favorite? And you go into alternates or there or just the, the baseline one? Yeah, I think, well, really, it comes down to those two, right? Because I think yeah. we, I don't know if we've really seen a game where, AJ Brown has struggled and Dallas Goddard and Devonta Smith have done all of the work. And I don't know that this right. Washington team defense is good enough to just, you know, take AJ Brown out of the scenario. So then you're looking at the second mouth to feed, right? Is it going to be Goddard? Is it going to be Devonta Smith? Um, and, you know, I, I feel like people would lean Devonta Smith because of the previous matchup, but Dallas Goddard, like I said, historically against this Washington team, like this guy has put up 60, 139, um, 70. So yeah, when you're looking at the alternate market, when you're getting at uh, plus 50 or 50 yards plus, he's already at plus money, plus 114. If you go 60 yards, you're getting plus 170 uh, or 182, plus 182. So I think that's interesting um, to kind of dabble in that market there um, with this team. You know, it, we talk about concentrated offenses and 
it's really hard to think of the Eagles because they utilize, you know, all these different pieces. But really, it comes down to that three-headed monster of A.J. Brown, Devonta Smith, and Dallas Goddard. Um, I, you know, four quarters, get Goddard to 60, 70 yards. I'd be willing to take a bet on that, two to one. Yeah. I think that uh, the Goddard one, if you look at, like, number fires projections, he's at 66.06 receiving yards, which seems kind of high. I think the projection might be kind of high, but if you plug that into, um, I talked on Friday about the, the bet scope distribution calculator, you plug in a projection and it shows you the odds that get different thresholds. If you put that number fire projection into the bet scope distribution calculator, Goddard to get to uh, over 50 receiving yards should be minus 166. So getting that at plus money is interesting. I think yeah. the projection might be a little bit high, so I'd probably manually lower that a bit personally to somewhere probably closer to 55 or so. But I think that overall, the thought process of Goddard potentially being undervalued is something that I would agree with uh, there for that one. Let's slip over and talk about Washington because uh, there will be no J.D. McKissick here for this game. Second straight game without him. Jahan Dotson's back, though. Um, he re-aggravated his hamstring injury, but it seems like he'll be good to go here. So when you look at the Washington side, any props standing out to you there? Yeah, I, I'm, I, I want to pick your brain on, on the, the running backs um, mm-hmm. for this team. But, I mean, Terry McLaurin, his over-receiving prop is 49 and a half. Um, we know that, that Heineke... He just loves to pepper this guy with targets, like even with Jahan being back, um, Curtis Samuel being in the mix. Like I'm just trusting uh, Terry McLaurin to, to go out there. I mean, now the secondary is good for the Eagles, but he's also had some success in the past and has played with Heineke, Alex Smith, Carson Wentz in these past couple of matchups. So it really doesn't matter who the quarterback is back there. Um, when we're talking about the anytime touchdown market, um, and this is kind of where I want to pick your brain at, like Brian Robinson at plus 230, um, it, it is one that I'd be willing to take a shot on. I mean, he's still been out carrying Antonio Gibson um, for whatever that's worth. And without McKissick, I expect, or I would predict Antonio Gibson to be more involved on passing downs and let Brian Robinson get going, but he struggled. Um, He struggled mightily the past Mm -hmm. couple of weeks. So I'm not sure if there's a change of guard there. I mean, Antonio Gibson was supposed to be the returner is what Ron Rivera told us. Like to start this season, we wouldn't even think about him being in the mix at this point, but Brian Robinson's story is just kind of so crazy. Um, And I'm wondering, you know, this is me trying to think of the narratives and I'll I'll be real quick with this. I'd I'd love to think outside the box with things, you know, me, Um, everything that was kind of surrounding Washington, right? Like in the news around Brian Robinson and what was going on with the, I believe the attorney general there in Washington and just how the, the shot, uh, him getting shot was made public and taken about with everything going on politically. Like, is this a chance for them to kind of like entrust in Brian Robinson, give him the carries and give him, you know, that momentum to say that the team's around him. So I feel like they owe it to him at this point. Like if they're going to like use him as a way, as like a crutch to get out of this thing, like they should as like a, Oh, we're sorry. We did that to you kind of thing. Right. Like (laughs) it was Pretty, pretty reprehensible. They were doing that. So maybe extend a little fig leaf, uh, you know, like, hey, right. uh, sorry, bud. Um, our organization yeah, he, sucks. He was. They were so excited about him and everything about the preseason was just like, this is our guy. Like they invested a, a high draft pick in getting him in there. So, you know, trying to maybe write that ship with him. Um, but, you know, on Monday Night Football with everybody watching could be something yeah. to monitor. So one that's related to that. Um my initial like thought process when I was thinking about this game was, okay, I want to look at um, Antonio Gibson receiving props. And I looked at his yardage number it was 23 and a half, but it's the, it, the over is minus 128. That's a lot of confidence in, in a, in a volatile market. So I'm not quite willing to get there, but like, okay, I'll look at his rushing plus receiving number. And in the process, I saw that a Gibson's rushing prop was 33 and a half. That seems really high because of, the Robinson involvement in early downs. You think about this, there are two paths to an under for Gibson at 33 and a half. The first one is, you know, he's just not involved. And I think that's as a, as a rusher, I should say as a receiver, he will be involved. I can almost guarantee that the other path is the Eagles defensive line just torches the offensive line. Again, they can't get anything going on the ground. And I think that's a very real possibility as well. Um, Eagles rush defense is not great. However, they are 10 and a half point favorites. Um, it's going to be a split backfield. I think that kind of playing off what you were saying, 
I think if I were looking at this game, the place I'd want to go would be the Gibson under rushing yards at 33 and a half. I think that's just a little bit too high with the way they've been using these two guys, specifically using McKissick or sorry, uh, Gibson as a pass catcher and Robinson as kind of the early down bruiser type guy. Yeah. No, that yeah, I I can get behind that absolutely for sure. I mean, Gibson's been a he he's got a place in my heart for you know playing DFS, um, you yes. know, a couple <laughs> times and him helping me out. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's been it's been a rough go for him. I mean, you just look at that guy and it, it, it's probably time for a change of scenery um, almost. Yeah. Like just let him move on to to another team and and be able to blossom elsewhere. But uh, but yeah, I like the under rushing yards for him as well too because I, I do think that you know with Brian Robinson leading the way with carries the past couple of weeks, if he can you know get any type of juice going, they'll just ride the hot hand. Yeah, um, I also have a soft spot for him. He had a, I think it was Thanksgiving. He had like three touchdowns against the Cowboys. Yes. Um, yep. I, exactly. I remember that one fondly. Yep. Yeah, uh, yep. good for him. He'll always have a spot soft spot in my heart, but. We'll take the under tonight and uh, see what happens there. Okay, you mentioned the Robinson touchdown prop. That's plus 230. Is that one where you're willing to bet or anyone else, any others or shit you're seeing that you like for tonight? Yeah, of course. I'll definitely be willing to to back up, put my money where my mouth is on Brian Robinson at plus 230. I also think Dallas Goddard um, at plus 200 um, is, yeah. is a pretty fair number um, when you're looking at all things considered. And then Jalen Hurts, just any time that we get plus money um, on a rushing quarterback of that magnitude to you know score one, um, I'm always going to be willing to take that plus 100. Like, why, why not? Um, when they get into the red zone, uh, we know that he's apt to kind of take it off and run, especially if they're on the one yard line. Uh, just keep you sneak it there. Um, so really, really, that's what I'm liking um, for this team. Quez Watkins is interesting just because of his deep threat. You're looking at plus 850 for him to score. Um, I think he just scored one last week, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, he's been utilized um, a lot um, when you're talking about the pass catchers outside the top three that we mentioned. So um Plus eight fifty. That's a nice number to to get on somebody um, who's seeing the field as much as he is. Yeah, I think that is intriguing for sure. Just because he'll be out there, so that's you're always going to give yourself a shot by playing snaps. The one that I thought about ultimately and will not wind up firing on is Jahan Dotson. He's plus four ninety, and yeah. we've seen him when he's been healthy, being like this touchdown threat. He was at a Penn State. He was at uh, before his injury. It seems like he's healthy. The reason I couldn't. Yeah talk myself into it is kind of what you discussed at the beginning with the under at 43 and a half. I think this game probably winds up being low scoring. So, and yeah. my numbers think that one of these teams is justifiably a 10 and a half point favorite. So I think there's a path to Washington just not doing a whole lot. So even though I, I was intrigued by that, the overall fear of Washington just dropping a dud prevented me from getting dots in that plus four ninety. Um, so that was, that was my kind of hang up was I agree with you where I think we could see a few points here. So to me, the touchdown market wound up, uh, being less fruitful than I thought it might be. I, I thought I'd be looking at Dodson, maybe, maybe Gibson looking at the, because of the passing stuff, but I couldn't quite get to either just because I think this game could be kind of gross. Yeah. And th this doesn't really factor in for me at all. Just the, a straight up question. Cause I don't think this is the first game that Jahan Dodson is playing without Carson Wentz. This yeah, is the first yeah. Heineke and Dotson game. Okay, yeah. So I would have to look at see like if there's any num numbers for them like preseason related or anything like that. Um, but yeah, I was I was hoping that we'd get over five to one um, on his touchdown. I mean, I think yeah. he, he's just an awesome player. Um, so mm -hmm. definitely, you know, getting him back healthy is just awesome to see. Um, but yeah, interested in that. Uh, Taylor Heineke also alternate passing yards like over plus over two twenty is plus money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm just going to take that because I think that it's going to be a long, long day for them. Yeah, I'm looking at 225 passing yards for him at plus 114. 250 is two to one. Um, and we know he has the propensity to throw the rock. So I'm willing to get in on that market. He's a degaffer too, which is yeah. to your benefit in this market where he'll just chuck and pray. And it yep. doesn't always do what it's supposed to because it's got kind of a noodle arm. But like, hey, I mean, negative game script. Gonna be playing from behind, probably not gonna be able to run super well. I don't mind yeah. that at all. So uh Heineke uh over 220. You said plus 114 on that one. Plus, yeah, plus 114 on 225. 
Okay, perfect. Well, we'll check out that one as well. There has been some money coming in on the commander's money line while we were talking, apparently, because that uh, Eagles money line is down to minus 550. Not, again, not quite enough where I'd bet it where it's currently at, but right. did take that one earlier on in the week. So we'll see how things play out here, and we'll see if we can nail some props to close out the week. But that is all that we have here for today for this commander's at Eagles preview. As mentioned, I'll be back with you once again tomorrow to break down my first thoughts on the week 11 spreads and also talk to Ed Fang about some, some matches in the World Cup because we are not too far down the road from that. We'll talk about some actual individual matches. Are you a World Cup guy, Ryan, or no? Uh, I... I'm not a soccer guy and I don't claim to be, but the World Cup is fun. Um, you know, I, I like I like getting around the things that happen, you know, every so often, every blue moon yeah. kind of thing um, where people can rally behind, you know, their specific teams and everything like that. So I watch for just the enjoyment of that. I do not pretend to act like I know what's going on or what's happening, oh. <laughs> um, but it always makes it fun to uh, to see those teams compete for sure. Yeah, I know nothing. Um, it's like my one excuse to be like, quasi patriotic you know root for the u.s right. for a little bit so especially each of the women's team but like uh yeah. we can do it for the men's team this year as well so we'll see how that goes we'll talk to ed about that uh on tomorrow's show to get that make sure you are subscribed to covering the spread wherever you get your podcasts and also check out the FanDuel youtube page where the are these are posted as well ryan uh, appreciate you as always good luck to you tonight and we'll talk to you once again thursday for our full week 11 preview appreciate you jim Thanks to everybody who's listening. We'll catch you guys next time. All righty. Check out Ryan on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. Good luck to all of you tonight. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down week 11 and talk some World Cup. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 